Hi, welcome to the MIP Discovery video series. I am Rhiannon Johnson and I'm a senior scientist here at MIP Diagnostics and today I'm going to be discussing exactly what molecularly imprinted polymers are and how they are made. Molecularly imprinted polymers are a unique type of polymer that are created around a specific target and leave an imprint of their structure. The most simple way to think about it is taking a piece of modelling clay and moulding it around your thumb. When you pull your thumb out, there is a specific imprint of your, of your thumbprint that is unique to your thumb. That is exactly how molecularly imprinted polymers work. MIPS are often referred to as synthetic antibodies because they work in a very similar way. Their binding pocket is highly specific to a molecule of interest and have an extremely high affinity. They can be used in various applications, such as in vitro diagnostic devices, environmental sensors, or sequestering of a compound of interest. MIPS were first developed almost a century ago, and since then various types of MIPS have been created. The first type of MIP is what we call a bulk polymer. This is where a selection of monomers and a crosslinker are combined with the template in solution and the polymerization is initiated using UV radiation or heat. Once the block polymer is created, it is essentially a large block of polymer which is then ground and sieved down uh, to release the template molecule and to also make the MIPS a more uniform size. This method is relatively simple, however the grinding process is very, is very labour intensive and quite wasteful of materials. Since bulk polymers, other techniques have been developed to have better control over the MIPS that are produced. Suspension, emulsion and precipitation polymerizations all create spherical polymers with a more uniform shape and size. In these methods, the functional monomers are suspended in solution with a suspending agent to stop the particles clumping together. The template molecule, crosslinker, and other additional elements such as surfactants and progens are added to optimize the polymerization process. When the template is removed, the remaining MIPS are a consistent spherical shape and the binding pockets are specific to the target of interest. The MIPS produced using these methods are typically in the micrometer scale. However, the demand for smaller MIPS for applications such as in vitro diagnostics has led to the development of another method, solid phase synthesis. MIP Diagnostics proprietary solid phase synthesis method gives rise to nano MIPS that are uniform spheres, typically under 60 nanometers in size, with discrete binding sites. In this method, the template molecule is suspended on a solid phase support, such as glass beads. A mixture of pre-selected monomers and crosslinkers are then added and begin to self-assemble around the target analyte via a range of interactions. These interactions include hydrogen bonds, van der Waals forces, electrostatic and hydrophobic interactions. Free radical polymerization is then initiated, followed by a series of temperature controlled elution steps to release the nano MIPS from the template. Nano MIPS are uniform in size and shape and offer a number of unique benefits. They are very robust and can perform in extreme temperatures, pressure and pH. In fact, MIP Diagnostics have sent MIPS into space and tested them on their return. They performed in exactly the same manner as before their trip. Another feature of nano MIPS when compared to traditional affinity reagents such as antibodies is their supply security. They are completely animal free and chemical manufacturing processes eliminate any supply security risks. It also means they offer excellent lot-to-lot -lot consistency, making them an ideal alternative to antibodies and other affinity reagents. A common question we get asked at MIP Diagnostics is how we characterise our nano MIPS. Firstly, we check the size of our MIPS using nanoparticle tracking analysis on a representative sample of each batch. We also measure affinity to the target using SPR. To test temperature stability, we can also autoclave our nano MIPS to over 120 degrees Celsius and test them pre and post autoclave cycle. Thanks for watching this introduction to molecularly imprinted polymers. To learn more about the applications of MIPS, remember to check out our other videos in the Discovery series, and please get in touch to discover specific projects with our team.